Here are a few tips that will make a big difference to your paper six chemistry exam. Question four might be the most challenging part of this paper. It requires thinking. While solving past papers, consider starting with this question first. Your brain will be fresh at the beginning and that will help you to think better and score more marks from this question. There is actually an easy way you can get all the six marks if you follow this procedure. You will always be given a sample. This could be a solid or a solution. Start first by measuring the volume or the mass. If the solid was given in large lumps, then crush the solid. Every time you do a certain step, mention the tool you're using for that. For instance, if you're crushing the solid, you're going to mention the pestle and mortar. If you're measuring the mass, you will write, I'll be using a balance. And if you're measuring the volume of the solution, you'll use a measuring cylinder or a pipette. Next, you will do the procedure you've been asked in the question. In most cases, it's going to be titration. You'll be mixing acids with alkali using a burette until the end point. That's where the indicator changes its color. In other cases, you'll be asked to find the rate of reaction. And that's usually done by measuring volume of a gas over units of time. You'll get one mark if you repeat the procedure and find the average. And you'll get the sixth mark when you write a conclusion. For instance, if you've been given two solutions and you are to find which one has more alkali, your conclusion will be the sample that requires more acid to get neutralized is the one that has a higher concentration of alkali. Now let's talk about graphs. There are two main types of graphs when it comes to paper six chemistry. First, there are the smooth curves. Those you're gonna be drawing with your hand and you're gonna ignore all the error points. Those are the ones that will be outside the main curve. Another type of graphs are the lines of best fit. Here you're gonna draw a line with a ruler through most of the points that fall on this line. And again, you'll be ignoring any anomaly or point that is outside the line. Bar charts are less common, but if you've been asked to draw a bar chart, make sure that the bars occupy more than half of the grid. Finally, don't forget to write the labels and the units on both axes. I wish you all best of luck for your exam.